Yo, what up? This tutorial has nothing to do with this look. I made my boyfriend a skeleton too. Chase, do you want to make an appearance? But take off those glasses, they look dumb. Anyway, this is totally irrelevant. This is how I'm starting the look, so that's part of it. Thank you. Step one. If any of you happen to already have a skeleton face on like I, you should first take it off and then we can talk. I'm using a red Krylon aqua paint just to map out where I'm going to put my cut. This is not the placement of where she had it done originally in the movie, but whatever, I do what I want. Then I'm taking third degree, which is silicone, and all you have to do for that is you mix parts A and B together in equal amounts. Make sure you use products that are disposable because they will destroy whatever you're using. So for instance, this little disposable cup and a popsicle stick slash tongue depressor. Mix small amounts at a time because when this stuff sets, it sets really fast and you will waste it if you can't use it all at once. It goes from being too liquidy one minute to perfect consistency the other to done for the next. Then using a palette knife, I am laying that down along the marker that I drew and I'm pushing down the ends that are away from this cut. This way it blends evenly into the skin while keeping the edges of the cut raised. You can use a palette knife with silicone or third degree as long as you wipe it off before it sets on the knife. A tip to blend out your edges is to dissolve them using rubbing alcohol. But just keep smoothing away. After getting to about this point, I started to bruise it out using my Zombie Palette by Skin Illustrator, which is an alcohol-based paint. You can use cream-based paints. You might even be able to use eyeshadows for this, but I'm not sure, so don't quote me on that. And then you can see here in this shot that I totally missed the mark on where I wanted this thing to go silicone-wise because I couldn't see very well since it's on the side of my face. So I ended up going back in and adding silicone much closer to that line to close the gap. And for a lot of this tutorial, you'll see me start a new step and then jump to the completed part of the step. And that's because I had to go wedge myself in between mirrors to be able to see what the heck I was doing on the side of my face because it's just too hard to do. I was straining my eyeballs. So once I got my silicone situation under control, I added some Ben Nye scab blood in the crevasses of the cut. Now we have to get it together. Get it together! By applying stitches. I used staples, but you can use black thread to do the same thing. Uh, so I'm gonna try the sticking it in there approach. Let me see what happens. That method doesn't work. So I ended up flattening the staples and using spirit gum to adhese them, but I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of a mess. Ooh, that just fell down my shirt. Oh god. No, no, no. Oh my god. No, oh my, I feel like I'm playing Operation right now. Holy shit. Ha! Ah, is it water on the knee? No, it's staples and spirit gum down my bra. Just did it again. Oh my god, it worked. I didn't want my stitches to look too delicate, so I left the staples in groupings of five so that they would be thicker and more manly. Now to covering up them facial features. I poured hot gelatin all over a plate in different shapes and sizes, and once they were dry, I would hold them up to my face to see which shape seemed to fit the best for this kind of look. Your big head might need something different than mine, but this is the shape that I ended up finding worked the best. But before we attach it to our face, you want to make sure that what's underneath of the gelatin is going to be as uniform as possible. Take off any makeup that you have, block your eyebrows if they're really dark, and then put concealer or foundation all over where you're going to be applying the gelatin. Then taking prosate adhesive, I glue it to my face like that. 
but we must smooth out the edges. I am using silicone or third degree, the same stuff that we use to make our cuts. And I'm going to continually use that, building it up slowly until it blends into the cut. Then all that's left to do is to paint. The only advice I have for painting is to do everything you can to try to even out the whole plane of where you have your gelatin. I covered it all in foundation and then I just started to lighten and darken certain areas until it looked as flat of a face as I could get. And that is the makeup. But no look is complete for the Bride of Frankenstein without a bridey looking outfit. And a fabulous Bride of Frankenstein hairdo. Mine done by the amazing Hair He Goes, my friend Darnell. Alright. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. And I only covered one side of my face because I knew that I would only be shooting one side of my face. But if you plan on using this technique to block out your features, I would recommend you don't do them all. Because if you do, you won't be able to eat or talk or see or maybe even breathe and you'll pretty much just be a potato. But at least potatoes get sweet accessories if you're married to a guy named Mr. Potato Head.